Hi everybody, and welcome to another piano video here at Miriam Pianos. My name is Stu Harrison, and in this video, we're not gonna be talking about an individual model of piano. We're actually covering something a lot more broad and something we get tons of questions about. How do I maintain an acoustic piano in my home so that we're getting the maximum life and maximum enjoyment out of the instrument? And we are going to cover all of the most commonly asked questions and all of the critical areas of the instrument that you as an owner are responsible for maintaining and kind of best tips on how to do that exactly. So thank you very much for joining us. If it's your first time to the channel, we'd really appreciate if you did hit that subscribe button. It helps us keep making great content for you and you'll be notified every single time we do. So let's get started. With an acoustic piano, the most important thing to keep in mind is this is an instrument that is made of natural materials. And because it's made of natural materials, it is going to react to things like temperature and heat and humidity. Now I say heat and temperature separately because of course temperature I'm talking about making sure that the piano has a relatively stable ambient temperature around it. Heat sources such as direct sunlight or a fireplace coming on and off is a sort of a separate beast and that's something that's to be avoided as well and then of course humidity uh, is something the more north you are the more difficult it is to keep it high in the winter the more south you are the more difficult it is to keep it lower in the summer. So we're gonna really cover all of that. The first thing that we're gonna talk about is the mechanics of the piano and what's important uh, to keep in mind uh, for that and what you can do about it at home. So I've got a couple of models just off to my right shoulder here and you can see uh, that we've got an upright action. And we've also got a grand action. I'm just gonna grab one of those because there's a few things that we can answer uh, when we're taking a look at this, of course, I have a Kawai action uh, that's in my hand right now. And so Kawai's use a combination of both uh, synthetic parts as well as uh, natural materials. Um, and so your piano at home may be uh, sort of all wood. Uh, it may have some synthetic components like a Yamaha uh, or it might be a Kawai, who knows. Um, but every single piano out there, including a Kawai, uses a wood key. And so one of the most important things to do in terms of humidity is if you can keep the humidity in your home uh, to around between 35 to 55%, there are going to be things that definitely are easier to deal with. One of the things you'll notice is on the keys, you'll have this red bushing material, both here, it's also underneath the key. I don't know if you can see that, uh, but there's a bushing up there. Now, those bushings are made of felt, and every single time the humidity goes up or the humidity really goes down, that felt either uh, poofs up or dries out and gets a little bit scratchy against the steel. Either way, you get sticky keys. So sticky keys are one of those things that occur very commonly on the piano, and the biggest cause is humidity being out of range. So if you're at home, you've got a sticky key, this is the reason why you've got humidity that's probably out of range and this felt has either uh, poofed up because it's absorbed a bunch of humidity or it's become dry, really scratchy, and it's creating more friction against the, uh, the steel uh, than usual. In both cases, um, the solution, regulate the humidity. So this can be done with either a floor humidifier uh, if it's in the winter or in the summer. Uh, usually just running air conditioning is all you need to do uh, to get that humidity down. Now, the second thing that maintaining humidity does is it also helps to keep the piano in tune. The soundboard on an instrument, which is slightly bowed as the strings are stretched across it, um, is set at a particular angle. We call that the down bearing or the crown on the soundboard. And so that refers to kind of the difference in uh, what the height of the soundboard on the outside compared to the inside. And it's usually about four millimeters, four or five millimeters. Um, as the humidity goes up, that's going to push up against the strings and actually cause them to go sharp. Um, if it's too dry, the soundboard actually shrinks a little bit, it pulls itself flatter, and the strings go flat. So there's two common issues, both caused by humidity, sticking keys as well as an unstable uh, tuning uh, dynamic. And uh, both of those can be remedied and helped by really good humidity control. Let's talk about the placement of an acoustic piano because this is something uh, that comes up a lot uh, in, in terms of a common question. Oh, I have an upright, can it go on an outside wall uh, or is it okay to have it in you know, room with a fireplace or some sort of a heat source? 
Um, the outside wall thing uh, was a far more relevant concern uh, if we go back 50 or 60 years and homes just weren't that well insulated. And so an outside wall, if you were in a northern climate, meant that that wall could legitimately be 10 degrees Celsius or colder if you were on a, on a winter day. Uh, whereas an inside wall would be, you know, a lot warmer. And of course, that's a huge temperature differential. That's going to cause a lot of stress on the soundboard um, and, and create a lot of, of um, tensions in the instrument that weren't intended to be there. I find that most modern homes, uh, the insulation is so much better and you don't get that type of temperature differential. So if you know that your house is reasonably uh, up to date, it's got, you know, well insulated walls and it's not sort of exposed to a really harsh, you know, western wind that's cooling off a particular wall, it's probably okay to have your piano on an outside wall these days. The other thing about having it near a heat source, this is legitimate. You do want to make sure that the instrument is not right next to something that's going to dry it out. doesn't mean it can't be in the same room as a fireplace uh, or a stove or something like that, but right next to it wouldn't be great and you do have to make sure you're compensating for that with some type of a humidity source or a, you know, a moisture uh, source. So that could be a floor humidifier, could be something that is uh, built in to the piano itself such as a damp chaser system. Let's talk about cleaning the piano. We get these questions too. What do I clean it with in terms of the type of cloth? Uh, you know, what, what sort of um, chemical uh, should we be using on this? And the short answer uh, in terms of the spray is uh, you want to stay away from any type of a typical polishing uh, or, or a typical cleaning uh, home, uh, you know, chemical that you might use. So this means no pledge, no Windex, nothing that's got an acid to it, nothing that's corrosive in any way. Uh, that really over time is going to totally mess up that beautiful finish on your instrument. So uh, there are piano polishes out there. Um, Corey's uh, is one company that's pretty common. Roland, uh, the digital piano company, actually makes a great polishing kit as well. And they include very, very mild cleaners, which not only remove fingerprints, but also uh, cut the grease really well. You're not having to scrub too hard. Uh, it's a quick couple of squirts and it works beautifully. If you don't want to go down the route of, of purchasing a specialized cleaner, then just a damp cloth will do the trick. Now, what are you spraying this stuff onto, whether it's just water or a specialized cleaner? Microfiber cloth. That is going to do the trick. You don't have to go and purchase a super expensive one, but just make sure that it's really soft. You don't want it to have any kind of a rough surface or, or something that over time might uh, start to wear down that high polish uh, finish. I get questions about toothpaste sometimes, which is a really odd thing. Uh, but I do know where people are coming from uh, because for a while it was kind of a, a, a MacGyver trick to fix CDs that were skipping uh, is to put toothpaste on the back because it sort of fills in the cracks, the toothpaste dries and it stops, you know, things from, from skipping. And so don't, just, just don't. Um, it, it, not only is it not going to really effectively fill uh, the scratch, um, but you're going to see it. This is, especially on a black piano, this is actually going to create, uh, draw more attention uh, to the swirls uh, than it isn't. If you're at the point where the piano actually really does have deep scratches that need to be dealt with, there's not really two ways about it. You are going to have to just go and find a refinisher with a high-speed buffing wheel, do it properly. Um, it's going to cost you a few hundred dollars in most markets. You're going to be able to find a craftsperson who can do this very well, get your piano back to its regular sheen. Let's talk about the keys. Uh, same thing with the outside polish. You do not want to use any type of a harsh chemical or cleaner on top of the keys, the white or the black. Uh, there is specialized key cleaner, um, often called key whitener or key brightener. Corey's, which is uh, a supplier that a lot of piano stores have access to, uh, sell this. It's called Key Bright um, and it helps them stay nice and white and it also helps to cut the grease. But if you don't have access to that, like my mom always used to do in my piano, she would just get a little bucket of water with a, a few dabs of soap in there, um, mix it up so that it was, it was a little bit soapy and then just lightly dab a cloth. It doesn't have to be microfiber, but I would stick with microfiber. And then you're basically going to just gently uh, brush from the back to the front, your keys all the way, uh, either bottom to top or top to bottom, so you can keep those hand oils from building up too much uh, and possibly yellowing the keys. 
Um, and one last final thing about the keys. Most, if not all, uh, new pianos come with a plastic key. The plastics, uh, the technology uh, in the plastic has got to the point where they're not yellowing nearly as much as they used to. And so it used to be uh, a no-no to have the keyboard in direct sunlight because that was just a virtual guarantee that within a few years those keys were going to start yellowing uh, because of the effects of the sunlight on it. That's not as much a concern, but um, generally it's still a good idea to not have the piano in direct sunlight anyway. We know that if you've got a south-facing bay window and you're going to put a piano in there where the light's going to be pouring in and it could be two, three hours in the morning of really intense morning sunlight, there's no part of the piano that's going to like that. The finish isn't really going to like that, keyboard's not going to like that, and especially if the light is getting into the inside of the instrument, it's not going to like it either. That's going to create all, all of these localized heat hot spots and cause swelling and shrinking on both the plate uh, and the wood. So to sum up, an instrument made of lots of organic materials that need to be treated with a little bit of care and uh, less like an appliance and more like a fine piece of art. We've got wood, we've got felt, we've got metals, all of which react to temperature and humidity and moisture. So the best practice is to keep your temperature with about a five degree span on either side of uh, normal room temperature, 21 and a half degrees or 72 Fahrenheit. In terms of moisture, you're going to try and keep that at the very lowest to about 35, but high 30s is best, up to about mid to high 50s uh, in the more uh, humid seasons. You're going to try to keep the piano away from any um, localized sources of heat or any major localized uh, you know, uh, sources of, of strong light, you know, such as a specific window that's facing uh, south for a lot of uh, morning sun. And of course, there's tons and tons of uh, great inexpensive specialized cleaning products that will help you keep um, the finish nice and polished up as well as the keys clean uh, and pearly, pearly white. Hope the video has been helpful. Uh, if there are other questions you have, definitely post them in the comments below because we'll either answer them there or collect all those and make another video uh, that deal with some of the other questions about uh, piano maintenance and how to keep your instrument in really great shape. One last thing, of course, keep the piano tuned up. We didn't mention it, but that's probably the most fundamental thing you could possibly do with piano maintenance. You don't want to let those strings go super flat. It just takes that much longer to get them to pull. And of course, it puts the strings under a huge amount of strain to constantly be going down in te uh, tension and then back up in tension. So enjoy your instrument. We hope you have enjoyed the video. Again, Marion Pianos here. My name is Stu Harrison. We'll see you back for another video next time. Sun is rising.